no, I went in and the doctor said, Molly, you have ADHD, the combined type. <laughs> Who's gonna give me the biggest reaction? Like, what teacher is that? I was one of the oldest in the class because like I say, I was there three years because I was the youngest in the school year. So I had an extra three year of college, if, if you get me. So throughout that time, I met two girls that let's just say were pretty much a match to me like behavior and personality wise and us three became really great friends and uh that was not a good idea so we went on a trip to um we went camping we stayed in army barracks and it was just bad i got sent to the like the head army person in the barracks and they were like i don't want you here I can't handle your behavior. And this was, he wasn't even part of the college. He was actually someone who was training people to go in the army. And he was like, you, I have never seen someone so disrespectful, someone who can't discipline themselves. You know, it, it was bad. He called me into the room and he was like, a really nice guy. <laughs> like, it, he was a good looking guy. He was really nice. But he just won't have my shit. And I actually felt very, very intimidated by his presence, which was good. So he rung my parents in front of me and was like, Come get her now or, you know, something needs to be done. I can't have her on my residential trip. Like, we don't want her here, basically. So obviously my parents were not happy and they were very, very angry. They were ringing me up constantly saying, Behave, Molly, you're embarrassing yourself. Like, if you want to go in the police, you know, it was just a bad time. And my parents were like, you are... 19 coming up molly and you're still acting you know like this like why and we all thought when it goes to college yeah my behavior is gonna change i'm gonna know where i want to go and there's more freedom and i get to do what i want to do i'll be interested in the subjects that i that i'm learning yeah, apparently that 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 was going to get rid of my behavior issues but instead the freedom the lack of structure the teachers it wasn't that they didn't care, but if you made, if you weren't making the effort, that didn't bother them. Like, if you were at school, they'd be chasing your tail. If you didn't turn up, the, the, the college was like, well, that's down to you. You're an adult. You, you deal with that. And it didn't really sit well with me. You know, I, I was just basically in trouble all the time. I had to resit maths at college for the three years. Every time the teacher that I had, she just hated me. Like, she was, I don't know how anyone has ever taught you anything. You're just... She called me a delinquent and was like, I just cannot have you. So again, I was kicked out of that lesson. And basically, I was just kicked out of college at the end of it. I was, it was a bad time. My behavior did not improve when I went to college. With the freedom and with me having a driving license, with me having my own money because I was working in Greg's, all that type of stuff, right? It, it didn't, it, it just made my behavior even worse. Like I was like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I'll go to college when I want to go to college. Basically, like I say, I was excluded, excluded. Then they were like, oh, I've had enough. Like, leave my college. I was kicked out of college. And at this point, my parents and my relationship got so bad that it was just, it. you know, like I say, my, my car, um, it was either Molly, get the hell out of my house or sort yourself out, basically, because it was that bad. You know, life was not okay. My sister was scared to even breathe near me because my... My temper was like, as sh literally it was so short. My dad and my relationship was the worst, you know, constantly arguing. I was, I, I was just in a very, very bad place. There was holes in my, in my bedroom door because my dad had like punched it out of anger because I've been so, like I've just been basically out of control. My behavior was just utterly hostile towards my dad. It was just a bad time and, and I hate looking back at that because I am, that's not me, you know, it's not who I am. It's not what I stand for in the slightest. It's, it's not me. I just wanted to be normal. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to feel normal. I wanted to have friends. It just didn't happen like that for me. Everything just was so overwhelming. I felt like I was living in a movie like it was like a disaster movie everything that i touched blew up every friendship that i had like was bad it ended in me being selfish me being like jealous or confused about like why do they not talk to me properly like have i done something wrong like being over like sensitive like things just didn't sit well with me in in many ways emotionally relationship wise friendships parents behavior things like that were just extremely tricky every time i googled it adhd was coming up and i and i remember doing it quite a lot googling things about adhd like does adhd make you do this does adhd make you do this does adhd like ruin your life does adhd 
it was just like I was googling a lot I done a lot of my own research then I went and spoke to my mum and you know it wasn't easy for me to admit that something wasn't quite right you know I just remember crying my eyes out and just thinking like I need to tell someone because I, I don't know what's going to happen to me I felt very like there was like no future I didn't want a future almost just wanted to not be here because the future was scary because I all I had to go off was my exp like my past and how messed up things can get when my temper goes and, and it was just a very scary time especially when you're on your own you know I, I didn't tell anyone so when I spoke to my mum it felt like a whole like something was just lifted off of me and my mum sat me down and was like I've been waiting for the day for you to come to me and and, and you know admit something's not right because I never wanted to tell you that I never wanted to be the one to label you you know me she was like me and my you mean your dad knew and we know that there's something not quite right we've known forever but it's, we didn't want to ruin your future or give you any kind of like obstacles to to have to go through to get the job that you want or like things like that you know it wasn't a selfish reason for them you know it was it was out of my best benefit and you know, looking back at it now, I am so happy that I wasn't diagnosed as a child. I am so happy that I was treated like a child without ADHD. You know, I know, I do know right from wrong. Yes, I do. But I also know how hard it is to um, deal with your temper. I, I've had to learn things the hard way. And I now appreciate how hard it is to be a parent to be a teacher i appreciate how much hard work people put in to my life to my future it's just in order for me to get through school to get through college like, i know how hard i was as a person and you know i'm so happy that i got where i am now and i can look back and i can answer like questions about myself like why don't i have friends why can't i make friends why you know i have an answer now so my mum was very open with me and was like I don't know how much longer we can take it as a family like she's very open and was like you know it's nearly split me and your dad up because you know your dad didn't want to carry on with you living here like it was getting to the point where people were giving up on me she was like you know we need to go to the doctors now just because i was 18 you know my mental age definitely wasn't that i was very immature i didn't do stuff on my own i was never independent like that um but anyway long story short we went to the gp um and thankfully i had a very very understanding doctor my mum came in the doctors with me and i had done a lot of research and you know I, I read on I read up about the process of being diagnosed with ADHD and I kind of expected there to be a long waiting list I knew that the adult AD like I was going to be classed as an adult I wasn't going to be be classed as like a child so it wouldn't go down as like an emergency or a crisis so I thought you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little bit more organized and i I brought myself a diary. I wrote loads of things down in this diary that I found really hard. Like, you know, there's pages. And so I took this to the doctor with me and I said, like, I don't know how to explain it, but I've, I've written it down in, in the best way I can. And she was like, okay, give me 10 minutes, go back in the waiting room, blah, 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 blah. And, and I'll, I'll quickly read it so I can get more of an understanding. And as soon as we went out there, literally within like 60, not even like 60, it's not even a minute, she came back out and was like, so I went back in and she was like, yeah, I agree. I think you have ADHD and you should go for an assessment. She was like, I only had to read the first page and she said, I became very aware that, you know, there's some, you know, that the traits of ADHD are definitely there. So along with that, you know, she put me forward for an assessment to be assessed for ADHD. So like I say, I was well aware that the waiting list wasn't going to be just like two weeks. It came to two years. I was on the waiting list for two years. And within those two years, let's just say, things just hit the fan and things just got even worse than they were before. But hey ho, you know, we kind of knew, well, that you have ADHD. You know, the doctor was very forward with that and was like, yeah, you definitely have it. Like, I'm not, 
the GP was like, that's why I'm putting you forward because obviously you need to go see a doctor. So in the end, you know, things got so out of control that I actually paid private to go to the doctor to see a psychiatrist, to see an ADHD specialist. I just wanted to see someone because I needed someone to just clarify why the hell I'm acting like this. Like, why can't I cope with society? Why can I not just be a normal person? Like, I was just needed someone to tell me why. So, you know, I paid private and it actually cost me a grand. But I saved that up through working and I was like, I don't care if it cost me 20 grand. I needed someone to help me. Like, my family were not coping. We weren't coping. We didn't need, I just needed help. Yeah, I went to this lady, but she is apparently, like, according to um, the people that I've actually spoken to since, she is the best ADHD doctor in the UK. She's so, I feel so blessed that she was able to help me. So this part is the process which I wanted to get out there because I don't want people to go to an assessment of ADHD and feel like I was. I felt very like intimidated and anxious about the process. So I'm gonna give you kind of like a little bit of an evaluation of how it went and like how it went down and like what happens. I'm not gonna talk for ages, but I'm just gonna make it as quick as I can. So basically the, the, the whole process of being diagnosed with ADHD is about gathering evidence. Um, so I had to go to my old school and get my school reports. I had to send it to the, um, the doctors that I was going to privately. I then had to get doctor's notes for my anxiety, stuff like that. I, I had to go, like my childhood kind of stuff. I myself had to fill in a questionnaire about how I feel um, on a scale of one to 10 on all different um, kind of scenarios basically. And my parents had to fill one out e like each. Um, so did my younger sister. They had to fill it out um, and it was all like, kind of everyone had to do it separately they weren't allowed to do it together and it was just like you have to answer it honestly truthfully and so you had to send that off um i think it was about two weeks before um the appointment so obviously the doctor can get a little bit more of an understanding of what it could be what the possibilities are so yeah that's like the first um step to getting diagnosed with adhd so obviously secondly the second part to the process is you go to the doctor. You go see a psychiatrist, an ADHD specialist. I'm not entirely sure what their um, title is. I'm gonna say ADHD specialist because a normal GP, they don't diagnose um, ADHD. So I'm pretty sure it's probably an ADHD specialist. You go see them. So when, when I went, I mean, again, it's my personal experience. I don't know whether this is for everyone, but for me, I was taken to a room on my own. My parents both had to come as well because they were going to go in separately and speak to the doctor as well. So I was in the room on my own with a doctor for about 45 minutes. Um, it was a very intense, like deep kind of question. And I had to answer the questions in ways. So she was asking me like, so the questions were very kind of relatable to ADHD and some you were thought like why why do you want to know that for so she said so in the questionnaire that you answered you told me that you found relationships like can you expand on that then she was like so can you tell me a time that you feel that you are over impulsive like when you can't control your impulsiveness can you tell me a time when anger gets the best of you you know we were talking about all different scenarios of my patients and stuff like that basically so obviously these questions were catered to me so mine were very much about my anger my impulsiveness like my school record she was like wow you got in a lot of trouble young lady um so basically she was a lovely lady um very friendly welcoming warming like i didn't feel that i was intimidated by her my eye contact was pretty bad like i i didn't sit facing her i was almost like to, to the side like so I, I find eye contact very hard and I think she picked up on that and I was fidgeting a lot and yeah so we answered those questions about 45 minutes went by really really fast and yeah that's that's my that's the the second step to the evaluation process of ADHD diagnosis so for the third step of my kind of diagnosis process was they the lady said right 
thank you Molly for your answers. Um, will you go get your parents and you stay downstairs in the waiting room? So yeah, that that's it. I don't I don't know what happened up there with my parents, but when I asked them, they said, you know, we were asked uh, why we answered certain things like that on the questionnaires. And um, they compared both parents' um, questionnaires and basically things, but I don't know. They were just slagging me off. No. <laughs> Obviously they were talking about life with Molly Molly's mayhem, like, like they were just thinking like we need someone to just talk to because my kid's just a bit naughty and they spoke about my mum's delivery with me and my mum's mental health um, I'm not going to go too in depth of that because if you want to know a little bit more about that when my book comes out that's the best like place to kind of learn about that because I don't really like talking about it so anyway you know so me growing up they just wanted to know this doctor wanted to know a lot about that and that's pretty much it you know for the for the third step so for the last step the doctor then came downstairs to the waiting room and was like come on molly come upstairs with me and your parents and i was like okay so i went up and i walked into my parents crying and this doctor was sat there with like a, a blood pressure machine and she was like come on come take a seat and I was thinking oh my god they're gonna do experiments on me now but no I went in and the doctor said Molly you have ADHD the combined type so then she said we can do therapy or she said I suggest medicating because you have a very very severe you know type of ADHD she said I've actually never come across someone you know not being diagnosed as a child and being diagnosed as an adult and, and and being this severe so she said what you've achieved what you've done in life you know is very good considering how bad your adhd is so we then and i was thinking why has she got the blood pressure machine out like why so basically she was like a hundred percent wanting me to pick medication over therapy so she then was like you know oh, i strongly recommend medicating because what you have and the type that you have and the severity of your you know impact of adhd she said you, i don't think therapy will help as well as the medication so when the doctor actually said the words molly you have adhd you know severely and you know uh, I literally looked at my mum and my dad and they were both like bawling, they were crying and I just looked at my, I, I just like thought to myself, oh my god, like there it is, that's the answer, that, that, that's it and I cried and, I, and I, I literally remember saying, oh my god, I'm not a freak, that was my words and the doctor was like, she put her arm around and was like, you're not a freak, you know, she's like, you've got a very, very severe neurological disorder and she was like it's very very you know impressive how far you've come with an undiagnosed disorder as severe as yours and it was such a pressure taken off of me and it, i just felt like oh my god there's the answer like that is it you know it's not me it's my adhd like oh it was the most amazing like thing to ever hear it was like the answer to all my prayers it was the answer to all my problems like so basically I then had to you know I came home and it was like ringing around the whole family and they were like wow there's the answer like but I was like shell shock I, I, I was like that's the answer look like, it was very hard for me to to kind of except that oh my god that is the answer i felt like i just wanted to ring every teacher up every person that has ever encountered me every friendship that's failed and just say like it wasn't me you know it's my adhd i just wanted to do that because i just felt like oh my god it's not me you know oh my god there's an answer let me know if you have any questions any worries if i can i will answer them if not i'll find a website that does and i'll send i'll comment back the link so thank you so so much for watching never be scared to open up and admit that you need help it's not a sign of weakness actually it makes me believe that you are stronger because you're willing to fight for your mental health 
fight for the life that you deserve, the future that you deserve. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye! Oh yeah, don't forget to smash a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. So yeah, thank you for watching. Bye! <laughs>